Hi, everyone. This is Lauren Baker, uh, founder of SEJ. Here, welcome to today's SEJ show. With me today, I have Paul Majorana, CEO of WooCommerce. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Hey, Lauren. Pretty good. How are you? Really good. Really good. Thanks for joining today. Um, for excited me. to have you here on the show. We've been doing uh, a lot of interviews with uh, representatives of WordPress.org and the WordPress.org community. Yeah. But with you being over on the um, automatic side, um, WooCommerce and also a background at WordPress.com VIP, um, really uh, interested in talking to you today about the differences between the two, uh, about the growth of um, WordPress.com and WooCommerce, obviously, and then um, everything that you've experienced uh, leading the WooCommerce project for the past, how, how long has it been? It's been about four years. I've been with, on the WooCommerce team for about uh, eight years or so, but in this role for the last four years. Excellent. So how did you get started at WordPress? Yeah, sure. So I joined Automatic about 12 years ago, uh, initially on our uh, WordPress VIP team, which is Automatic's enterprise WordPress offering, where we provide things like hosting and support and sort of ultimately peace of mind to some of the biggest companies on the planet, folks like Facebook and uh, the White House is hosted with uh, WordPress VIP and, uh, you know, a number of other very large institutions. It's been a long time since I've worked on that business. So uh, I'm not as familiar with sort of their current clients, but it is, you know, a, a sort of high performance enterprise scale hosting for WordPress. And I had actually, uh, prior to my time at Automatic, had spent my career in media and publishing, was uh, most recently the CTO of Fast Company and Inc. magazines. And uh, in that role was actually a customer of VIP. So we were actually, okay. uh, if you, um, uh, recall Robert Scoble, you know, the a big blogger at the time. And uh, we had actually, Robert had joined the Fast Company staff and uh, to lead a, a new product that we were introducing, a new video channel. And Robert, one of his stipulations was that um, that we would provide hosting uh, for his very popular blog at the time through Automatic's VIP solution. So I got to, uh, I became sort of familiar with Automatic and the WordPress community and, um, uh, the VIP solutions uh, through, uh, and Matt, Automatic founder, and Tony, who was our CEO at the time, kind of through that relationship. And I'm just like, this is a really special company and had not really, uh, while I'd used WordPress a little bit, had not really appreciated the like community and ecosystem that was behind it. Right. So I have really Robert Scoble to thank for, I should, I should send him an email, uh, for sort of that entree into the WordPress community. And then um, when I was ready to, to move on and, and find a new role, you know, reached out to, to Matt and Tony and uh, we had a great conversation and I uh, came over to VIP. And then again, it's been uh, a pretty amazing you know, 12 years since. Super cool. So if it wasn't for the Scobalizer, you, you, you would not be on the WordPress <laughs> right, the side, Scobalizer. Right? I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you, you, you came over from Fast Company um, over to WordPress VIP. Um, what led, uh, first of all, it, it sounds like you're really interested in VIP, just, just being a user of it, right? Uh, That's right, the, yeah. The other side. And, and what led into the direction of WooCommerce? How did WooCommerce become part of the automatic picture? Yeah, so WooCommerce is actually an acquisition by Automatic about eight years ago. I think it was July uh, 2015. And, um, you know, WooCommerce so it was an independent company at the time, I think about 55 people or so, um, uh, but looked a lot like Automatic. You know, they were building in the WordPress space. They were a remote first company, just like Automatic uh, is. They were using a lot of the um, same just sort of internal tools and things that we use. So there's just a, like a lot of... Uh, shared DNA for one and, and common interests and goals, you know, a mission driven company, just as automatic and the WordPress project are as well. Um, and we had, you know, a, we were, uh, of course, you know, building in the website building space with WordPress, WordPress.com. And, um, you know, increasingly, we're seeing a lot of interest for e-commerce type solutions. And that was a, certainly a gap in our portfolio, um, product portfolio at the time. And so, you know, it just sort of made like common sense to join forces with the WooCommerce team. Again, they were already a big part of the WordPress community. So it really kind of, you know, you talk a lot about uh, the potential integration issues after you acquire a company. And, you know, it just really felt like from the beginning that we were uh, all part of the same family here. And so, uh, yeah, it was about eight years ago. And um, the majority of the WooCommerce team is actually still here at Automatic. That's nice. Hey, and, that's, that, that's a great acquisition story to do. 
Yeah, exactly. The, and, the you know, again, I think it, it comes back to that just kind of shared DNA and, and yeah. uh, a real appreciation for the mission of democratizing publishing and now commerce is, you know, sort of how we've adapted our mission since uh, we joined forces with Wu. Um, and actually, the origin story of Wu is pretty interesting itself in that they were... Um, hear that. Yeah, so they were actually, it was founded by three guys, two, two working out of uh, Cape Town, South Africa, and another, the third founder was Norwegian. And they actually came together to build... It was actually a theming business. So themes in WordPress, if you're unfamiliar, templates, it, effectively how the front end, the customer facing aspects of your site look, yes. right? And so when um, uh, these three guys came together, the founders of Woo, uh, initially they were building a, a themes business, a templates business it's called Woo Themes. And this was really just as WordPress was kind of evolving from its roots as a blogging engine into the website builder and kind of application framework that it has become today. And so they were seeing a lot of businesses really uh, interested in WordPress and they were building a lot of business focused themes. Again, not like blogging themes, but building a full business kind of website. Uh, so they were finding a lot of success with those themes. And so their actual, the idea to develop WooCommerce was actually not to go and build a business in and of itself. WooCommerce was actually developed to be a, um, effectively a loss leader for them to sell more more themes. And then, of course, WooCommerce took off like wildfire and had such success that, you know, that was really our interest, again, in, in acquiring the company. So uh, even when when we we bought Woo, they were still uh, doing business as Woo themes and going to market as a theming company. Um, yeah. But but again, we very quickly kind of changed that and, and had been, you know, uh, kind of 100% behind WooCommerce and the e-commerce functionality uh, since, yeah, since about 2015. Yeah, I do recall with Woo themes, and and for some reason I never made the connection between the two. Yeah, the commerce yeah. Theme, that, that makes that makes complete sense. So it was developed. Yeah. It was developed as its own standalone commerce uh, solution theme, or it was developed as a solution to be able to sell new themes and new skins to place on top of WooCommerce. Yeah, so it was really developed in a technical sense as a plugin for WordPress, right? So for folks who are unfamiliar with WordPress or WooCommerce, WordPress is built with a very modular architecture. So out of the box, it is still largely kind of uh, ships as a blogging engine by default, but then through plugins, you can, uh, of which there are 60,000 or so free and open source uh, WordPress plugins out there that you can leverage to do really, you know, anything to help the, if you want to turn WordPress into a wiki or you want to turn it into an e-commerce solution or, a, you know, a, a, an internal sort of like intranet, right? So you could do all sorts of things with WordPress and these plugins essentially enable, you know, and augment WordPress to add those additional features. Um, so WooCommerce is a plugin for WordPress that adds that kind of e-commerce shopping cart functionality uh, and, you know, so that was the idea was by introducing this e-commerce functionality into the WordPress ecosystem. Yeah, the idea was that they would be able to, you know, they would bring in more businesses to the WordPress right. community and thus they'd be able to sell more themes. Um, but, you know, again, we've, we've since um, uh, uh, repositioned the company and are really, you know, themes are, of course, of course, a, an important sort of enabler to e-commerce. You know, customers want to know that they can have a really great front end experience for their customers and uh, the, for the shoppers really, right? Our customers are merchants. And, um, uh, but anyway, you know, the, the so real was, focus of our team is yeah, building that, those commerce capabilities. Was the plan that, to integrate WooCommerce as a solution inside of WordPress VIP at the time or to have it be its, mm. its own standalone um, brand or self-serving mm. company within the automatic umbrella? Like, uh, yeah, what was the we plan? An How did that change model, yeah. and where did it get to where it is now? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say the plan was really both. You know, we, uh, like WordPress, we think WooCommerce can, uh, can and should and does, frankly, power customers of all shapes and sizes. So, you know, we, ha we have had uh, e-commerce and, and WooCommerce on WordPress.com, which caters at least historically to consumers and smaller businesses, all the way up to WordPress VIP, where some of the, again, kind of biggest brands on the planet are running uh, on VIP and leveraging WooCommerce. So Tonal is a good example, the uh, direct-to-consumer brand um, at-home workout uh, solution. So they're a, you know, a high scale VIP customer running WooCommerce. Uh, but we also have, you know, millions of small businesses that leverage the same software. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. And it looks like WooCommerce has about, um, what is the market share right now of, of the e-commerce solution that WooCommerce currently has? Yeah. So WooCommerce powers about, um, what is it? Well, it's actually not, uh, sorry, I was going to say of the internet. There are about 9% of sites, 8.7% of sites of 
uh, percent, sorry, eight point seven percent of sites on the internet are powered by WooCommerce. That's not stores, but sites generally. Um, mm-hmm. so it's about one in five WordPresses, and about a third of stores, if I remember correctly, about a third of storefronts. And is the uh, actually the top uh, most trusted and, and most popular solution uh, for the top million stores on the web as well. Oh, interesting. So, so WooCommerce has a mark a market share of a third of of online stores. You're saying? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's uh, measured by more people. or less. Yeah. Yep. More or less. Wow. That, that, yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, um, especially over you know, the span of how many years? Uh, WooCommerce is about 11 years old. 11 years old. 11 years old. Yeah. 11, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, I think like WordPress, right? WordPress powers 43% of the web. And, you know, right. I think so many folks are, like, you're, you're using WordPress without even realizing it, you know? And I think that's one of the, the just sort of interesting things about the WordPress community and, and ecosystem and, and WooCommerce's part within that is um, sort of the, the, the best kept secret of the internet in many ways. Well, there's an interesting component too in like bringing it back to search marketing and content marketing at the end of the day. I mean, there's not really necessarily, um, there's not necessarily an alternative to a WordPress blog solution out there. Like WordPress has it in terms yeah. of blogging, right? That's and right. It's interesting because, there, there are so many companies that have utilized other e-commerce solutions, but those solutions do not necessarily have a blogging platform that's up to date. That's so right. A yeah. lot of the time, WordPress will be utilized on a subdomain or maybe brought in, especially especially with tools like um, you know uh, Gatsby, React, and things like that, maybe brought into a subfolder structure on a site that's sure. powered. On a site that's e-commerce solution is maybe powered by another third party. WooCommerce, yes. however, alleviates that issue. So you still have the content marketing component behind everything. You still have that's the right. ability to sell, but I would say more so you have the ability to more cleanly integrate between, uh, especially from a data tracking perspective and a conversion pers- perspective, between that informational to transactional funnel that starts at those those pinpoints of, of content along the consumer journey. Right. So that's exactly right. Reading it, directly it, in the buying, learning directly in the buying, learning directly in the signing up uh, to be part of, of the of the, the, the mail solution and in the future to get dripped yep. to finally buy, like whatever it is. It's definitely, you know, that's exactly how we think of it. Right. That with WooCommerce and WordPress together, you get the world's best and most popular commerce engine and content engine combined, right? And so you don't have to compromise in bringing these two things together. And they actually, it's like a one plus one equals three in many ways as well, and that they build on each other. You know, if you are sort of, you know, bolting on say an e-commerce solution to WordPress or a, you know, a publishing engine to WooCommerce or vice versa, you wind up in a situation where, you know, just literally two different systems that you have to do a lot of extra work to get to talk to each other. But with WordPress and WooCommerce together, you know, if you're, you're writing about a particular subject on your blog, that is obviously, you know, to some degree is relevant to the products that you're looking to sell, right? That's the whole point of content marketing. Well, you can easily upsell and cross-reference your products and, you know, just drive that of like a connective tissue and, and experience across your site. That's just intuitive and easy and effectively out of the box if you're using both WordPress and WooCommerce together, as opposed to, um, again, kind of two different systems that you really have to like duct tape and glue together instead. So we've, we've had some conversations with uh, Josefa and from Naoko from the um, .org team, both like yeah. really representing the, uh, the WordPress.org community. Um, sure. One thing that really uh, that really stood out was how involved the developer community is on the .org side with um, decision making in terms of growth, in terms of Gutenberg, in terms of rolling yeah. out components of Gutenberg. Even uh, yesterday, when I was talking to Naoko, it was about the global, uh, the localization of Gutenberg and translation. And when you have all of these other plugin developers that have developed translation plugins, and then suddenly Gutenberg the iteration of Gutenberg 4 should have a, a translation component. How involved is the developer community with WooCommerce? And, mm-hmm. and how does that work on the automatic side? Because on the .org side, I mean, it's, you know, your, your open source community, but with an automatic, you have VIP, WooCommerce, um, yep. other tools. How does, it, how does that work with a community of WooCommerce developers? Do you have an ongoing relationship yeah. with that community? How does that help? And how does that help to uh, empower... Um, empower the team of WooCommerce? How do you help to empower those developers and, and, and grow? 
it's a really great question and hits on a lot of the things that we're working on at the moment, actually. So the uh, and, you know, there I think there's actually a lot of confusion because from the outside WordPress and uh, or sorry, WooCommerce looks a lot like the WordPress project itself. The, the, it's open source, the platforms, WordPress has a concept of plugins, WooCommerce has a concept of extensions, basically plugins is all very similar. The difference, though, in governance is really important, which is that, you know, nobody really owns WordPress, right? It's stewarded by the WordPress Foundation, a nonprofit who owns the intellectual property and everything around WordPress. And, you know, is guided by Matt Mullenweg as, you know, its founder, co-founder and still project lead. But there's, you know, the the governance model is 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 different, right? Where with uh, WooCommerce automatic wholly owns WooCommerce. It's still an open source product and we still use the GPL, you know, license, it's still free software, the same word, uh, same way WordPress is. But we fund effectively all of the development of WooCommerce, right? Probably 95% or so are paid employees of Automatic. And I think that's the right structure, right? Nobody really owns WordPress. And as volunteers, we all come together to build that. Automatic owns WooCommerce and we shouldn't really be relying upon volunteer labor to produce a commercial product. So you know, but we are very happy to, of course, for folks who have like an affinity for WooCommerce and just really want to help and fix bugs, add code, you know, write documentation, any of these things. We're certainly happy to have those contributions and value them. I just want to make it clear that we, you know, also are not intending to build our business on the backs of, of volunteers, right? So there's a very different approach uh, on, in terms of like the open source WordPress project, WordPress.org, and then how we operate WooCommerce from, again, kind of a governance and just day-to-day like operational development standpoint, where it's basically the WooCommerce team here at Automatic that are uh, that are driving that day to day. However, gotcha. we also, but we do very actively engage the developer community around WooCommerce because uh, you know we are not merchants ourselves. You know we're not uh, in the weeds building uh, stores for customers, and so the developers bring a really important perspective to us and insights on. You know, certainly we do a lot of customer research and talking to merchants directly ourselves, but that developer perspective is really important to us too. So um, uh, anyway, all that to say, while there aren't a lot of direct contributions to actually building WooCommerce, again, in terms of like literal code contributions, uh, certainly the community and ecosystem that uh, exists around WooCommerce are a huge part of how we uh, build our product and platform. Could you go a little bit deeper into the extensions and integrations that WooCommerce offers mm. across the board? Yeah. Anyone that may be looking into developing on WooCommerce for all of the reasons that you've mentioned previously? Yeah. So we think of WooCommerce a bit as like an operating system, not unlike WordPress. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, WooCommerce does out of the box, but e-commerce is hard. And there are probably a dozen different kind of like product areas that a merchant might need a solution for. Payments, shipping, email marketing, whatever, right? And so we um, uh, we try to build a relatively like thin or lean core software package. So that is what we call WooCommerce Core. And that is the free software that we make available, literally free in the sense of like cost, but also free in the sense of freedom. It's like speech, right? You could do whatever you want with WooCommerce. That is the the benefit of the open source general uh, uh, GPL software license that we use. Um, it provides those kind of uh, uh, permissions, right? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. What was your question? <laughs> uh, just about the, the different integrations that are available. So you have, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the default, right? Um, everything that that's coming from a free perspective of WooCommerce setup. That's right. Integrations that marketers can utilize, uh, maybe from uh, shipping, email, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So the free core uh, is, you know, we try to keep that relatively lean because we want people to build exactly the type of store that they want and not have. You know, we've all used these kind of bloated software packages that are sort of like a jack of all trades and mm-hmm. maybe do one thing well, but everything else really mediocre. So instead, we want our merchants and customers and developers to be able to build exactly the store that meets their needs. So it's, you know, if, if we, we make our own payment solution, but if, you know, if you're in a country that we don't support yet or you have some unique needs, then uh, absolutely. You know, there, and then you can leverage PayPal or Stripe or right. Square or any, you know, any number of partners that we have in the payment space. Or so, you know, these extensions effectively exist and we we operate the WooCommerce marketplace, which is an app store of sorts uh, and built into every WooCommerce site on the web so that uh, our 
community can easily extend their store, find solutions that augment WooCommerce, and but also to know that like there's a company standing behind it, right? That we've reviewed these things and assess them and ensure that there's quality and that they work well together, that they're performant and scalable. And so, um, you know, we try to, uh, you know, if, if you're familiar with sort of the cathedral and the bazaar, we try to bring the best of, best of both to our community, right? Where they can have the, you know, kind of build a bespoke cathedral, but also have access to the bazaar of kind of choice in our uh, ecosystem. Got you. Got you. Kind of like a sweet spot between um, the uh, app, the Apple app store and Google play. Not necessarily That's right. West, a little bit more curated. Um, I'm looking at That's your right. uh, extension marketplace right now. And one thing that really popped out is featured is the Mercado Pago checkout. Mm. Um, it's already in seven countries in Latin America and has the best checkout for your customers' preferences, types, et cetera, et cetera. So this kind of got me thinking, um, yeah. how, how is WooCommerce, how do you, how do you operate from a, glo- a localization perspective? Um, is it something that's default out of the box, kind of like the translation systems that we see over at wordpress.org or maybe even VIP? Um, or are, how do you, how do you work with, uh, uh, say Tonal, for example, if they're looking to expand into, uh, multiple countries, Latin American market, making sure that they're producing pages that are relevant to Google. Google's picking up that it's not duplicate content, yeah. the US, et cetera, et cetera. How does that work on the WooCommerce side? Sure. Yeah. You know, WooCommerce is a global platform for sure. So we have customers in effectively every country, <laughs> essentially. I mean, we're a little more heavily weighted towards countries that uh, are English speaking, but, you know, Germany is still a top five country for WooCommerce. So, you know, a pretty, uh, wide array of countries. And that is because we've, you know, there is such a great support for localization. So, you know, and I think what you're asking, there's almost, there's sort of two sides to it, right? So for, as a, uh, from a merchant's perspective, can I just literally use the software, right? Is it well translated yes. and supported and things like that? And the answer is yes, right? So we provide support in multiple languages. WooCommerce itself is translated, I think, into something like 60 languages. It's actually a, an area where, um, speaking of kind of uh, contributions from the community around WooCommerce, translations and localization is a huge part of that, not just in terms of people providing those translations, but also sort of the other side of the coin, right, is how merchants can build an experience that's localized for their shoppers. And so, you know, this is, that's not just providing sort of easy translations of content, but also uh, local payment methods, right? If you're in a country that's, say, you know, doesn't uh, tend to use uh, credit cards, but is using Sofort or Klarna or something, you know, has a more regional friends for a payment solution, you know, you're not really localized if you're not providing that, that local, uh, again, payment method or local shipping carriers. Um, so, you know, that there's, uh, we may be sort of uneven in some places where we're translated, but don't have say as strong support on shipping solutions in our core product, I mean, but that's where the the ecosystem and community really come together and, and help kind of fill in the gaps, right? There's thousands of people that build extensions for WooCommerce. Yeah. And, you know, again, we may provide a, a shipping solution in South Africa. Maybe that's not the highest priority for us today, right? But if it's a priority for that developer, and then we can work together through our marketplace to actually help them distribute that integration w- to uh, everybody using WooCommerce. So that's the beauty of open source. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. We're able to be, you know, a lot more sort of lean and mean than some of our competitors as a result, because we've really, I think, done an effective job of kind of federating this ecosystem of, you know, independent uh, software developers, agencies, freelancers, web hosts, right? All of these folks that kind of come together to um, produce a WooCommerce site uh, and a quality product. Um, you know, we, we're, our interests are aligned. And uh, I think that again, makes for like a better customer experience ultimately. It's very interesting. Very. Um, <clears throat> some, of the, some of the challenges I see uh, with um, e-commerce platforms is um, that, are, that are not WooCommerce um, mm-hmm. have been dependencies on other, d- dependencies on third parties for basic build outs of things like templates, custom templates, mm-hmm. Um, publishing, things like that. So, uh, for example, I'm, I'm working on two different projects right now on two different e-commerce platforms, and they're both using a tool called Shogun to mm. uh, be able to build customized pages that, that just seem sure. very basic to me at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, uh, something as, as basic as adding um, uh, customized uh, schema markup on a 
PDP in our product page to add FAQs is something it should not be very difficult to do. Um, the ability to have an open source solution like WooCommerce, where not only does it seem more malleable and more like, I, I guess, developer or or friendly at the end of the day to be able to be able to say, and even even SEO friendly, like getting back to this being an SEO show, like it's like, yeah. Hey, we'd like to uh, add this markup. Hey, we'd like to add a content block. Hey, we'd like to do this. Okay, done. Because it's basically the same the same uh, platform as WordPress and an e-commerce style solution, right? So um, that's right. That's definitely that, that's definitely been an advantage over the years. Where do you see WooCommerce right. going, and what are some of the most exciting launches that that you've had in the past year or two? Yeah. Uh, a big thing that we're working on is really kind of simplifying WooCommerce uh, for new customers. You know, it is a little bit of, of what you were just speaking to is, you know, historically WooCommerce is, and WordPress has really been uh, a solution that like uh, developers would bring to their customers, right? And kind of build out the storefront. Certainly there are a lot of folks that are kind of initiated in the WordPress community and have the the, the kind of time and, and uh, capabilities to go build with WordPress or WooCommerce themselves, but generally speaking, you know, compared to say a Wix or Squarespace or Shopify, we know that there's a little bit more building required still in kind of the WordPress and WooCommerce experience than in you know more recent website builders, and um, and so you know we think we've got a, a real advantage and opportunity to uh, through WooCommerce provide you know a solution that developers really love, which has been our base and and where we've been for years, but also to provide a more a kind of opinionated package of WooCommerce and extensions integrated with a hosting solution to provide something that's much more turnkey and simple and just more intuitive for a merchant to get up and running with. You know, we've seen, um, it's just a, a bit more of a complicated model today. Again, that kind of fragmentation I was speaking to in the product experience where, uh, you know, you may, um, uh, sometimes, you know, I think the the flexibility of WooCommerce is also uh, can be a real challenge. Again, for somebody who is not really interested in building their storefront and really deeply customizing the experience, they just want to be able to put in their email address, their business information, their product information and start selling. And so that's a big effort that we're working on. Uh, we recently introduced something called Woo Express, which is uh, powered by uh, WordPress.com. And the idea there is exactly that, like a simple streamlined uh, solution where, you know, instead of providing a lot of choice to our customers, we're making some decisions and saying, you know, this is, there's probably a dozen different ways to sell gift cards with WooCommerce, right? But we're saying that this is, you know, the best way to do that. Or, you know, to, if you want to run product bundles or whatever it might be, right? Um, these are all represent separate each of these features represents a different extension in the WooCommerce ecosystem today. And we're bringing that all together into a pre-configured solution so that it's just easy. And again, people can start selling um, without having to build. Very cool. Very cool. That, 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 that does seem like the future, right? Especially for someone that's just wants to build their website even on their phone, right? They don't necessarily have right. a you know, laptop. I, I, I know people that don't have laptops and computers and it drives me crazy. Sure. Personally. I'm sitting there looking at them <laughs> doing things. <laughs> How do you get by? Yeah, uh, exactly. Do. And then when they get on a laptop, they start like touching the screen and there is that's a generation right. that, that's doing that. So, but I think that, what uh, like, you know, what also makes for a really interesting advantage for WooCommerce in this way is that, you know, this is, that's really a profile for people who are just getting started. You know, we know that as businesses grow and, and, you know, they, they build their customer list and their customer understanding that they, you know, develop a stronger appreciation for their own business and how they want to go to market and the customer experience they want to deliver. And, you know, increasingly as stores grow, they find more value out of WooCommerce, right? The, uh, really, again, when you're getting started with Woo, generally speaking, that flexibility, you know, that we provide as an open source platform is valuable, but frankly, most small businesses don't really need that level of customization, right? But it's really as you start to grow and say like, well, this particular feature is a priority for my business. And I understand the opportunity cost about having it and what the return on investment would be if we went and build it. But we're on a proprietary platform like a Shopify or Wix or whatever that, you know, this feature is just not a priority for them. So they're stuck, right? But with WooCommerce, you know, even if there's a, a particular thing that you want to do with your business and it's not a priority for my team, it's not on our product roadmap, you could still go and build it yourself. Or, you know, there probably is an extension that already exists in our ecosystem that, 
you know, introduces that functionality instead. And, you know, even if it, again, it gets you 75% of the way there, then your team is really only responsible for that last mile instead of having to build it all entirely yourself or, again, be kind of stuck in uh, a proprietary platform's backlog, feature backlog. Also, companies have to start somewhere, right? So you have a- Exactly. You, you brought up Tonal as an example, right? But it, but it, uh, as a, uh, uh, a company using uh, utilizing WooCommerce platform, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking of like, you know, maybe your 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 mom and pops or your startups that have grown over time, right? First, you just right. have the ability to easily sell, ship, maybe return and communicate, right? Yes. But then over time, there comes things like, oh, what about shopping cart abandonment? Oh, what about churn, uh, busting exactly. churn in terms of sub subscribing and subscribe and save? Um, landing pages set up specifically for ad campaigns, um, things like that. So the ability to start with something simple like, Woo Express, I guess, or something like that, just out of the box, simplified shopping environment. And then as that company grows and as they go down the paths of more and more and test more and more marketing channels, making that easier to grow from a core as opposed to having everything thrown at you at once and trying to figure it out. Sounds like a, a, a very logical solution. Um, are there any examples of companies that have grown in an organic fashion utilizing WooCommerce? Yeah, yeah, tons. I think um, I really love the story of, uh, you know, they're not a, a massive business, but there's this uh, a couple behind a business called Tiny Wood Stove, which is, um, you know, the product is exactly what it sounds like. But well, it's, it's such an interesting story to me because I think it's so representative of what we really try to do with here with Woo and really, you know, more broadly across WordPress, which is, you know, this sort of short version of a long story is there are a couple who I think had been working their like nine to five jobs, had their first child and realized that this, they kind of were, you know, disinterested in, in the grind anymore. And so they bought like a, an Airstream, I think it was, which is also a WooCommerce customer, funnily enough. And, um, you know, we kind of adopted this nomad lifestyle. And first they started using WordPress to blog about this, their newfound nomad lifestyle on the road. And then um, they found that they were like seeing a lot of inbound traffic actually around this like one blog post about uh, how they were heating their their airstream trailer and that led to like an affiliate style business and then they were i think a reseller of tiny wood stoves and now they've got like a manufacturing business and they're building you know their own wood stoves and i think you know it's not a huge company again i think it's a team of maybe five or ten or something like that but they are um you know they're now living kind of the lifestyle that they want to live and have built an incredible business around it all using wordpress from you know the very earliest days and it's been able to, to kind of grow with them they've added you know again originally it's just a blog they've added woocommerce to power now the storefront and um anyway i think that's just such a, a neat story that like pretty well encapsulates what we're trying to do here with woo it is a cool story we'll, we'll be sure to link to them and feature them in our on our update yeah on cool the blog post as well. Paul, where can we find you online? Where can our listeners find you online? Sure. I'm on Twitter. Uh, not very active, but uh, all, my DMs are open. If anybody wants to engage, I'm just P Majorana, P-M-A-I-O-R-A-N-A -A -A uh, on Twitter. And um, I don't know, LinkedIn, Facebook, probably all the same. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Paul, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure learning more about WooCommerce, how it fits into the automatic. I didn't realize it was an acquisition at first or even connected to the Woo theme. So like as soon really as you cool that, I was like, boom, yeah. boom, boom, like it, like it totally makes sense. And I've been around long enough to remember the, that whole crazy theme marketplace. Yeah. Um, that, 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 Feels like forever uh, ago, but really not that long ago. Yeah. What's that? It feels like forever ago, but it's really, you know, still relatively recent history. Yes, yes. So it, it's really been a pleasure. Um, we're going to be doing a recap of, of our conversation today, sending out more guides on WooCommerce, things like that. But thanks a lot for jumping on the SEJ show today. It's been a pleasure. And um, we'll do more to, uh, to learn about WooCommerce and, and e-commerce in, in general with our, with our audience. That sounds great. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this week on the Search Engine Journal Show. If you liked this episode, subscribe to our channel for so much more and click the notification bell so you don't miss a thing.